Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we introduce our last set of back crosses with the aim of restoring a guppy line that consistently produces a solid white color trait. The last female guppies we are introducing to Gandalf come from the offspring of crosses two and four. If you are new here, my name is Ivan. The first goal on this channel is to fix a solid white color trait starting with only a single male with this characteristic. We named him Gandalf, and he's fathered several crosses at this point. If you haven't seen them yet, I recommend checking them out. Crosses two and four will be the most relevant for this video. Cross two involved a female with a gray-based body color who passed down this trait to all of her offspring. This was also true with cross number four. Gandalf has a recessive blonde-based body color, which is also the only trait he's passed down to all of his offspring. This means that genetically, all the offspring in both crosses two and four are heterozygous for the gray-based body color. In our video with cross four, we also discussed female four's half-black trait. Currently, we are assuming that this is a purely sex-linked trait on the X chromosome. Because of the results of cross four, we concluded that all of the females must be heterozygous for this trait. We went in more depth in that video, and I encourage you to check it out if you want more information on it. When the offspring of crosses two and four were still young, I carefully separated the males from the females. In this way, I kept the females virgin before continuing with this next set of back crosses. For cross number eight, I chose a female from cross two with the widest tail. I only had a small number of females to choose from, but I think she might produce some interesting results. I believe that the magenta gene plays a large role in making Gandalf white. However, one of the consequences of this gene is that it reduces fin size. I'm interested to see how the large tail of this female will interact with Gandalf's magenta gene. I'll talk more about the magenta gene in our next video with the update on cross 5. Because we know that this female is heterozygous for the gray-based body color, we could expect to see a 50% split between gray-based and blonde-based offspring when backcrossing to Gandalf. I introduced this female to Gandalf on February 10th. We should expect to see Fry from cross number 8 sometime between March 1st and 11th. The second cross we are discussing today is our final back cross, cross number 9. After finding the healthiest females, I chose two from cross 4. These females have the darkest pectorals and even some iridescence on the tops of their peduncles. I think this part of the body is technically called the saddle. So I'm not sure if the colored pectorals will be passed down, but I'll keep an eye out for it. These females are also heterozygous for the gray-based body color and should produce gray and blonde-based offspring when back crossed to Gandalf. To predict the outcome of the half-black trait for cross 9, let's do a quick Punnett square analysis. Based on our results from cross 4, these females should be heterozygous for half-black. This trait is located on the X chromosome, and I have their genotype represented as X capital NI1, X lowercase NI1. Gandalf does not have this trait and is represented by X lowercase NI1, Y. Filling in the Punnett square tells us that we should expect 50% of our offspring, both male and female, to have the half-black trait. I didn't fill in the body color of the offspring in this Punnett square though. This is because we will have guppies that are blonde-based that also have the half-black trait. To properly see this, we need to transition to a Punnett square that considers two genes at the same time rather than just one. This can get a little complicated, so I'll try my best to explain what I can. So let's start with our females. They have two different copies of the genes that control the base body color, meaning they're heterozygous, or big G and little g. To account for the half-black representation of our females, I'm adding the notation next to the Gs, but separated by a vertical line. Now, we must list all the different pairings that can occur between the two genes. This is kind of like the FOIL rule in math. 
FOIL is an acronym that stands for first, outer, inner, and last. So let's pair the first copies of each gene. This will be capital G and X capital NI1. Again, I'm using a vertical bar to separate these letters because they control different things. The outer copies of each gene will be capital G and X lowercase ni1. The inner copies of each gene will be the lowercase g and X capital ni1. And finally, the last copies of each gene will be lowercase g and X lowercase ni1. We have all the combinations that our females can give to our offspring. There is a total of four of them. We can now add them to their appropriate spot on the Punnett square. We could do the same thing with Gandalf, and I'll just start listing the four combinations on the top. Lowercase g and x lowercase ni1, lowercase g and y, lowercase g and x lowercase ni1, and finally, lowercase g and y. Gandalf still has four combinations that he could pass down, even though two of them turn out to be the same as the others. We can begin carefully filling in the rest of the Punnett square by combining each of the copies that the parents can pass down. Every square that has a dominant capital letter G for gray-based body color and a lowercase letter G will be a gray-based guppy. All the double lowercase letter Gs will be blonde-based. Let's turn our attention to the half-black trait. The squares that have two X's will be females, and if any of them have a capital NI1, they will have the half-black trait. The squares with an X and a Y will be males, and if the X has a capital NI1, they will automatically have the half-black trait. Looking at our filled-in Punnett square, we have four different types of offspring that can show up. Counting everything up, it says that we should expect a 25% chance for each of the different types. Granted, I'm not entirely sure how a half-black blonde-based guppy will look like, but I'm looking forward to seeing the possible result. I also want to stress that we will likely see other colors show up in addition to just the two genes I brought up. I mean, who knows? There might be a blue, red, yellow, or even a big-eared guppy in the mix. At the moment, I just don't have enough information to make those predictions. The best I could go on is the base body color and half black traits. I introduced our females from cross four to Gandalf on February 15th in the same tank that the female from cross two is in. We can expect to see Fry sometime between March 6th and 16th. As a reminder, this will be cross number nine. I'll be placing the females from cross two and four into their separate tanks when that time arrives. Hopefully this is accurate and made some sense. I'm learning as I go and I'm excited to see if the results match the predictions. There is a chance that they won't, but that's how we learn. It will continue getting more complicated before we finally fix the solid white color trait that Gandalf has. If this is something that interests you, please consider sticking around. I will start circling back and updating you on different sets of back crosses. In the next video, I'll be going over cross number five. Similar to how we introduced two different genes into the same Punnett square in this video, we will be introducing another set of genes to talk about some interesting preliminary combinations we are seeing in cross five. See you next time. <laughs>